Hi everyone, this is Dr. O, and in this video we're going to talk about the pterygoid venous plexus. It is really closely associated with the muscles of mastication. Specifically, we're going to talk about what is this pterygoid venous plexus. We find it between the lateral pterygoid muscle, which is deep here, and the temporalis muscle, which has been reflected up here. So it is found right in the midst of these muscles of mastication. This will receive veins from all of the region, so tributaries from the region around, and then drain into the maxillary vein. So all of this comes together, this plexus comes together to form the maxillary vein. So in this schematic, we can see that pterygoid venous plexus is a big blob. But remember, it is all sorts of kind of a plexus and lots of small veins that are connected to one another. It receives tributaries that mostly parallel the branches of the maxillary artery. So we'll find these in the next video when we're talking about that maxillary artery. Um, but we will see branches from the cranial cavity, like the middle meningeal vein, or from the muscles of mastication, like the deep temporal or also pterygoid branches, mesoteric vein. And then we also see inferior alveolar vein and buccal vein. A lot of these also parallel V3 branches. One that we haven't talked about quite yet, but you'll hear about more in the future, is the sphenopalatine vein, which will be coming from the pterygopalatine fossa. Now, the pterygoid venous plexus is very important because it has very close relationships and communications with structures around the orbit, the face, and the cavernous sinus. What we see here is that there are communications through these veins called emissary veins with the cavernous sinus. Also, the face through the deep facial vein, which we can see coursing here between facial vein and the, uh, the pterygoid venous plexus. There's also an indirect communication through this inferior ophthalmic vein, um, which connects to both the cavernous sinus and the facial vein. Now these veins that we're talking about here that are communicating do not have valves. And what that means is that the flow of blood is not necessarily one way. So what we can see is that an infection from the face could follow veins back into the cavernous sinus, leading to an infection within the cranial cavity. Now, as the pterygoid venous plexus kind of comes together, it forms this maxillary vein. And the maxillary vein joins with the superficial temporal vein to form our good friend, the retromandibular vein. So that was the vein we saw posterior to the mandible, and it gives off two branches. So these two branches are the anterior and the posterior divisions of retromandibular. We see the posterior joining with posterior auricular to form EJV, and the anterior joining with the facial vein to drain into IJV. So let's take a look at these. Um, the veins aren't completely well represented in this image. Uh, the pterygoid plexus just looks like a couple. That's kind of what you see around in this region. Um, but know that those communications are there, and this is to give you kind of a 3D space of where these three major regions, cavity-wise, the orbit, the face, and the cavernous sinus, are related, and then how the maxillary and superficial temporal veins come together to form that retromandibular vein. All right, so take a second to write down your answer to this, but I'd like you to describe a pathway that an infection could follow from the secondary, excuse me, from the second mandibular molar to the cavernous sinus. So I'll pause for a moment here. And when you're ready, let's talk about it. So we'll start here with the second mandibular molar. So what vein will drain that? So we'll see that the vein that will carry blood away from the teeth will be the inferior alveolar vein. 
okay? So that's the one we're seeing right here. So that's our first step. Then where does that inferior alveolar vein drain into? That'll be into the pterygoid venous plexus, okay? I'll never call it the PVP, but I'm writing it out that way just so that um, you don't have to watch me write all parts of that word. Uh, so pterygoid venous plexus, then there could be a communication here, right? So what is the communication? That would be through these veins here, which are the emissary veins. And the emissary veins then would lead to the cavernous sinus, which would be the spot where now we have an infection that has spread from a tooth up into the cranial cavity. Now that's everything for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I will see you in the next video.